Today, I'm talking to a guest that landed his dream gig as a remote closer with ultimate flexibility. I make my own days. I make my own hours. I mark off in the calendar when I want to work, when I don't want to work. There's no requesting time off. As long as you're making KPI, like it's 100% up to you. And that was the lifestyle exactly that I was looking for. He found this position in only six weeks with some pretty incredible income potential. Our low tier closers at KPI, which is about 25 to 30%, are doing about 12,000 a month and our top are doing about 37,000. He also dropped a couple of really key takeaways for people that might feel like they're stuck in their nine to five and just not achieving their dreams. Way too many people think that their nine to five job they don't want should be their job in life. And I think it's the job of every person is to chase their dreams. All that coming up in today's episode of the Remote Closing Academy podcast. Dude, before we jump in, how's the day? How's the week? No, it's been it's been pretty awesome. A lot of excitement coming up to it, kind of knowing that this was it, you know, leading up to today, especially uh, where the grinds, the grinds finished, like the morning commute, my last one, sitting in traffic, last one, you know, like, not being in control of my day the last one. So it was, it was a big day for me. Good week. Good, man. So I I think that's a really great place to start. I mean, obviously we'll we'll talk a lot about just like what you were doing for your nine to, nine to five, but I guess I'm just curious kind of if we bring back and, and really wind the clocks back, uh, I mean, just kind of give us a, an insight of what life has been like just as, as far as you, uh, as far as you want to go. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's been pretty crazy realistic the last year. So uh, in January, I finished up a six-year contract in the United States Navy. Um, where I was stationed in Japan overseas and I, I got to see a lot of Asia and stuff and that was great but uh, I knew I wanted to get out like after six years because I joined out of high school at 18 um, and then I wanted to get into sales and more specifically real estate since I was like eight that I knew that was the goal um, uh-huh. so I, I knew that's why but unfortunately I got out at like the worst you know uh, housing crisis since 2008 real estate kind of market since 2008 so I knew that yeah. wasn't probably the smartest goal at the moment Um I started up an Airbnb. I did that with a friend. It went okay. But like I said, I'm in sales. It. I wanted to do sales, not property management so much. Um, and then I needed somewhere to go after that. So I kind of landed a job down here at Raytheon. Uh, they recruit us from the military because I work with weapons and computer targeting systems in the military. And I work on, I, I'm an advanced electronics technician for them for components for like the F-35, the F-18, uh, electronics go to those jets and stuff like that. And then um, yeah, didn't last long in the nine to five for, I realized and it's exactly why I wanted to go in sales and I was eight years old. I, I kind of hate this, so, yeah. um, uh, just feeling stuck around everyone around me that's been there for 10 years, you know, not anywhere. And so it really renewed that fire of why I wanted to do my own thing. And that, uh, and towards the end of my Navy contract, I started up my own online coaching thing where I was kind of doing it as a side gig. I, I was coaching people cause I do, I'm getting into bodybuilding now, but I lost like 150 pounds when I was in high school. So like fitness is really big to me. Oh shit. Nice. And like, that was cool. That was a good time. Uh, but I was a really, really bad salesman. I had no sales experience at all. And I just trial by fired for a year, which gave me somewhere, gave me a lot, but I had no foundation, you know, no construction to it. And then I actually joined RCA because a, uh, a person I know also joined and to better my sales skills and then actually fell into the funnel and realized like they were going to give me the opportunity to do sales, which I love more than the coaching. So why not do that full time? Because that's what I want to do. So that's kind of put me at where I'm at now. Nice. Yeah. I want to go into to a couple of things on there because, you know, obviously we'll talk a lot about RCA and kind of your experience in there. But um, so it, I, I'm curious, you you say, I think you're you're the first person that's come on here that said like, you've always wanted to do sales. <laughs> I think <laughs> so many people have been like, you know, they kind of fall into it or they originally have like kind of a negative, um, they have mm-hmm. a negative view based on their like experiences. So was there anything just from an early age, other than like the real estate stuff that you were interested in that made you want to be a salesperson? But did someone you know in sales, like how did that come to be? No, absolutely. So my oldest brother, he's a lot older than me. Um, he's like, he could be my dad. But you know, as a kid, when I was like eight or nine, he was already in real estate and that's kind of where that started. But he was, he's the kind of dude that as a young guy, he was really, really good at sales even back then. So he was like 30 when I was eight. I used to like worship him as my idol because he had all the cool cars, all the street bikes. You know, he was like yeah. the young self-made guy. Uh, and I just loved it. He used to talk about it. You know, he didn't want to be capped. He wanted to be able to make whatever he felt like he was worth and the hard worker. And so, yeah, I think that's probably what started pretty young for me. Yeah, that's I think that's really important to, you know, for, for some people. And again, it's so many people have just like a negative view on sales or just, you know, call it a capped mindset or whatever is because of the environment that they grow up in. Right. And, you know, when is you're. It- surrounded at a really young age of like cars and boats and whatever i think you know some some people are are kind of put bring up brought up in a mindset where you know let's say their their parents they you know let's say they're they're with their parents and their kids sees like a you know a nice car or whatever and 
you know, some people have like that a parent might say if they have a limited mindset, they might say, well, they probably like scammed people to get that or they might, you know, whatever. Right. It's like this negative thing, but it's just such a, you know, it's, it's good for you that you grew up with, with someone that was, you know, in that position. Um, okay. so, so yeah. So w- with the real estate stuff, you were talking about how, you know, it wasn't really the best, uh, the best time to <laughs> yeah. sell so you're, you're saying basically during, um, you know, 2020 and all, you know, COVID and stuff like that. Well, yeah. So I got out of the military right as the COVID boom was collapsing. Um, interest rates were on a rise. All my friends that I knew all of a sudden, you know, the 3% was no longer happening. That was gone out the yeah. window. 6% was starting to get seen and stuff like that. And my brother, he's still in the mortgage industry now, but as a sales position, um, was telling me, he's like, yeah, we, we've like, we're doing like 10% of what we were doing just six months ago and it's only getting slower. Mm-hmm. Um, that kind of, kind of brought me in the position I'm like, all right, I, I need to look for something, but that's probably not the best market because everyone is jumping ship in the real estate industry that I know. So mm. that kind of gave me a good heading to not do it at the moment. <laughs> yeah, kind of, kind of dodged a bullet. I I know when I um, <laughs> it was actually in 2020, uh, when or 2019, I had started uh, one of my like online uh, agencies, or I'm sorry, it was like in the middle of of having the the agency, and sure. we targeted real estate agents. So it was like 2020 came along, and we literally lost like. 80% of our clients like overnight. It was, it was insane. And that was, you know, one of the main uh, catalysts to, to jump into more like remote closing, like, you know, mm-hmm. working with other businesses and stuff. So what, um, you know, within the, so what was your coaching offer that you, that you had? I, I don't know if I caught that part. For my uh, fitness stuff. Oh yeah. Yeah. So it was, it was a fitness coaching offer and and what, so the, you were just coaching people one-on-one like group style. What was that? So yeah, I was all, I was all online. Uh, so it was one-on-one. So basically I would bring them in and I would do like a, a uh, full meal plan, you know, a full fitness stuff. Um, and I was targeting, I was running Facebook ads and Instagram ads. And I was targeting veterans and generally guys about 30 to 45, uh, because that's generally going to be your crowd who actually has the money to spend on coaching, um, especially at that time. Yeah. Um, and I, like I said, I loved it. It was cool. Um, you know, once I got into ads and Facebook, that obviously really expanded, you know, my job is kind of the owner of the business and all the different marketing and stuff. And I got to understand that. And I'm a really big, like, I want to know how everything works guy. Yeah. Um, so that was awesome for me to be able to see that side of it, be able to see exactly, you know, the true existence of Facebook and Instagram being an ads platform, which I had never thought of it before that. Um, so I liked it. It was just super cool. But as I kind of like six months in out of my year of doing it, I'm like, man, like I get more hyped up for my sales calls than I do my actual coaching. Mm. That was the part that I really, really liked, even though I had no structure. Um, and, it, and it was definitely trial by fire. Like I lost a lot of leads because I didn't know at all what I was doing. Yeah. But because I had to learn it the hard way, you know, some of this thing got cemented into me. Um, and then I was doing that full scale up until last month. And then I realized like, man, I, I would love to do sales for a bigger company. I kind of just ramped it down because I knew, you know, I, I always want to do stuff at 110%. I don't want to have a little over here, a little over here, a little here. Um, so it was an easy decision for me, but no, it was a cool time. I'm glad I did it. I love the business aspect of stuff. And I, you know, I, I actually did it better than a hundred books is actually doing something. So yeah. And, and I think that just, that comes back to, um, you know, we talk about it a lot is the difference between doing and, and thinking and planning, right? There's a, a book I always talk about. I don't know if you've ever read it, uh, ready, fire, aim. Um, it basically talks all about that. It's like, everyone's always in this, this, uh, this mindset of like, all right, we need to, we need to get ready and we need to aim. And then, but they never fire because they're too busy, worried about like the structure and how everything works and overthinking. So, I um, you know, obviously, uh, I, I assume that probably comes from just like the background of, you know, you seeing your brother knowing that he can see success and, you know, along that, along that route. Um, okay. So, so you, so what was the time frame of finding RCA? So I know within your post, you're talking about, you know, six weeks within the program, yeah. getting place and stuff like that. So did you find RCA before you left or, you know, stopped doing the business or like, what was the kind of the time frame with, with all that of finding RCA? So I only found RCA. See, if I've been in six weeks, that means I found it. I've been in now about seven weeks, you know, weeks since I made the post. That means yeah. I found it like eight weeks ago. Um, just tack on a week to that. But basically, <laughs> yeah. like I said, that same person that I knew, she found the 30 day closer course. Um, we're both in the same place where we were, we know we want to do sales. We know we want to do real estate, but we'll some right now. Um, and she ran it across me and we'd actually jumped on a seminar for another remote closing course to belong to someone else. And their yeah. seminar had technical difficulties and screwed up, which led us. We're like, well, we want to figure out more about this. Which led us to RCA, and thank God that one screwed up because it wasn't half as good as offered as RCA was. So it's kind of like a by default we landed here. Um, but uh, yeah, so like I looked at that and basically 
she's not in sales. Uh, she doesn't own her own company or anything, but I told her, I'm like, well, it looks like a good gig for me to become better at sales for my training uh, business because I knew that was my fault at point. I had the ads coming in, I had the leads coming in, but I knew I wasn't a very good closer. Um, and I, I didn't want to, you know, continue the next two years and lose all those leads because I want to do trial by fire when I could just learn it. Uh, so that kind of, we stumbled on that. She joined like two or three days before me and I told her, I'm like, okay, you know, as long as you really, really thought about this, um, but I'm going to make a game plan. I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, figure out what I want to do and I'll probably start in 30 days. And I ended up joining that same day. Uh, oh, <laughs> I think it works out. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> Action but, taker uh, at its finest. Yeah, well, realistically, like, especially with the Airbnb in my business, like I said, I just learned, like, the first thing you want to do if you want to learn is just jump in the pool. You know what I mean? Like, stop putting it off unless it's going to truly tank you in the moment. Um, and so I, I did that and jumped right in. And then, yeah, that was, it only took me about four days from when I learned about it from when I was in um, the full RCA for 30 days. So, Got it, man. So I, just to give some some context to people that uh, don't really understand too, is uh, so at you know RCA, we have two different programs for for people. And again, we, we try to, uh, what's the word? Uh, we try to cater to, to really everyone. So like, you know, someone's just getting started. I always recommend like, hey, go to our YouTube channel. Like I literally give everything out for free. Like it's not, uh, I try to keep it as, as uh, you know, I try to give out everything, right? And then obviously we have 30 Day Closer, which is kind of like our introductory program. And then we have RCA, which is essentially our our flagship program, if you will. And uh, that is to pretty much just help people and hold their hand through the whole process and stuff like that. Um, so just, just to add context for people, if we're throwing out 30 DC and RCA, they're like, what the heck is this <laughs> a lot of, lot of acronyms going uh, around. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, okay, so you you jump in, so you jump into 30 Day Closer, you go, you jump into full RCA. So what's, I guess, what were your first impressions? Like, what would, did your first like week look like? I mean, seeing it only took you six weeks, so I'm assume, assuming you got kicked up pretty quickly. Just what was, I guess, first impressions and first week? What did that look like? Yeah, like, so right off the bat, what because I've been through a mentorship before, I did a mentorship to start my online fitness coaching business. So I have a little bit of context of what self looked like. Um, and right off the bat, kind of what I noticed is different about RCA and that really drew me in to get into it so fast was it's all about like, uh, there's no period of, Hey, like take two weeks to go through content, kind of get yourself ready. It's like, Hey, like, like do a mock call your first night. You know what I mean? Like jump in, just start it. So I realized as soon as I jumped into like community page, like there was a ton of people just listening, like, Hey, I'm brand new, but I, I want to do mocks, you know, and I've eaten 30 mocks or I've done all this, um, or I've landed gigs. Like I noticed there was a ton of like gig landing posts for people who had not been in a long time, which is a really cool, reassuring thing. Cause now, you know, it's not like, okay, this, like, this isn't smoke. They were blowing. Like they have a lot of people here who, without having to be pushed by RCA to make these posts are just making these posts because they landed these gigs and they're, they're super excited. Um, so I got paired up with my coach jet right away, uh, which, you know, he, I think that made a lot of sense. Me and him have a lot of the same background. Um, and we get along really well. But just immediately, I'm like, yeah, my favorite thing about it was like, okay, like they are going to allow me to push through this as fast as I will. So if I really just hit the ground, I put it to it like there's no, okay, in two weeks, let's call in two weeks, let's call, you know, here's your step. It's how fast and how much will are you willing to put in, which is exactly what I was looking for. Um, so I was super impressed by that right off the bat. And that made it worth worth it for me just to do the whole RCA right off, right away. So Nice. And so did you, I know you're talking about doing our, uh, you know, mock calls and stuff like right away. So I guess for you, uh, you know, cause we have the, so for people that don't know, we have the course material, you have the coaches, we have a ton of group calls. So what was maybe just your implementation path? We'll say for that first week. Um, so right off the bat, I jumped into content like three hours a night. Um, because I, that was, you know, why I joined RC in the beginning phase. Cause I, I understood, I understood sales, but from like a non-structured uh, which is crazy because as soon as I started going through the content, I started seeing all the stuff that I had learned. I just didn't know terms for it. I didn't know yeah. why this worked, why this didn't. And stuff just started clicking for me so fast where I was like, oh my God, there's actually a structure to this. You don't have to fire in the dark every time you get on a sales call. Um, so I just did that. I think I did like 40% of the content in like four days or five days because I just literally oh, sat shoot. there and killed it. Uh, and then even though I'd already done like 200 sales calls in my own business, I was still super nervous to get on a bot call because I'm like, oh man, I've never had a script before. Like this is all new to me. Uh, and on, I shouldn't be nervous. Like this is stupid. But uh, I saw all these other people who had never done anything in sales and they're just jumping on them and putting themselves out there. Uh, so I did my first mock call on day four, I want to say. Um, and then jumped into that and was doing those. I was trying to do three to four mock calls a night for the first like two to three weeks to get as many as I could knocked out um, with the goal of getting placed as fast as possible. 
So I did that. And then me and Jet were meeting every four days because I was knocking out his homework as fast as I possibly could. And for me, like as soon as I got home from work, it was just until bedtime, I was just cooking out RCA. So yeah, nice dude. And I, I, you know, touching on that, what you said about just checking in with Jet and then uh, something that you put in your post is, you know, the, the cool thing about RCA is like we, we employ, I mean, at this point, I think 14, 12, 12, 14, like full-time coaches. Yeah. So, you know, if, you know, whether it's, it's uh Dylan here or anyone else that's coming to the program, it's like, we, we're here to help you how, however quick you want to get going. Like we understand some uh-huh. people are, you know, they have families, they have kids, they have, you know, full-time jobs. Like if they can only implement, let's say, and have one call a week or one call every two weeks, right. We kind of cater to that. Um, but I think just, it's a testament to, to you is like, not saying that, you know, people take their time, but I do think there is more people that spread it out a little bit more, whether it's nerves, sure. whether it's time, whether it's whatever, um, as opposed to, you know, someone like you, that's just like, kind of like just busting it out nonstop. How, um, <laughs> how difficult was it for you to find people to mock call with if, if at all, or did you find it easy to find people to, to mock with? Oh, no way. Like, cause like what, if ever, I usually get home about like three thirty PM I'm PST. Um, which means that I had a session at 4 p.m., 6 p.m., and 8 p.m. for me every night. Uh, and there was always, I mean, at least 20 people waiting in that group when the room opened up that were ready for mocks. So, like, that was the coolest part. You didn't have to search for mocks. And even on the weekends, you guys now have calls uh, when everyone's off. And then uh, I dropped my link in there and I had a ton of people that were booking for me, you know, who were working or at unusual times. Um, so they could still get their mocks in. I could still get my mocks in. And, like, that was, like, that was a crazy part because I, I kind of overloaded myself accidentally because I was like, okay, I need to get these mocks in. So I dropped my link. I like signed up with a bunch of other links for people. And then I like woke up on a Saturday and I opened up Google calendars. I'm like, oh man, I got 10 mocks today. <laughs> I had no voice at the end of the day, but like, it was cool that I could do that though. You know what I mean? Like I could just start nailing. I got 30 mocks in like a week um, just because I was, that's what I wanted to do. You know, one weekend I knocked out like 15. So that yeah, was really cool. Nice. Good man, and and that's uh, it, it's super cool to to see because you know obviously I'm I'm a little bit more like on the outskirts on like the marketing side, and you know I do do take some sales calls internally, but you know I I have a lot lesser time these days to like jump on the mock calls and you know kind of go through the group and stuff. So it's really cool to see um, you know hearing from you and, and everyone else we've had on the podcast that um, you know you're able to get those those calls in even if it's even if it's uh, jumping into the deep end a little bit uh, you know for those first couple of days. But like you said, it's like the more reps you get, the the more com- comfortable you get, and and uh, getting them knocked out, and you're you know completing your homework as well. So, um, okay. So, what was the I guess the next step? So, you're doing all your your mock calls. Um, I'm assuming you talked with Jet, and he's like, "All right, dude, like start self sourcing." So, did you go through the pipeline? Mm-hmm. Did you self source? Like, what was that that next step? Yeah. So, at week, let's see. It took me about a week to accept my offer. So, week five, I started pipeline, um, and he wanted me to start self sourcing on top of that, which I did. Uh, and so that was right off the bat, I got like four really great pipeline offers. Cause I, I put in originally for setting only because I've only been closing for myself. So I really, uh, I wanted to learn that position like professionally first. Um, even though I've been doing it for myself because my main setting was DMing for me. Um, but I got one right off the bat, a couple great fitness offers, um, uh, and some real estate offers that were really, really good for setting. Um, and I got a closer position offered and then I self-sourced, um, a couple companies like Vshred, um, NLCA, which was actually the company that started my fitness business. I actually reached out back to them and said, hey, like, are you looking for a closer or a setter? And they gave me an interview. They all gave me an offer. Uh, and so I actually, the offer I ended up picking was actually self-sourced. Uh, but like all the pipeline offers were incredible. They were, they were like the hardest day for me is I sat down for a whole day and made myself make the decision and send off the emails. And like, because I was just like, oh my God, I've only been a pipeline a week and I have a like by the end of this week, I will be placed. That was a cool feeling. Yeah. Like even if it's my source or his source, like I have so many options ahead of me right now. Like it is guaranteed by this week I will have a position. Yeah. Um, so that was sweet. Dude, that's that's actually it, it's interesting. And not saying that, you know, we we haven't had someone on that they have been flooded with offers, but it, it sounds like you were in the opposite position where I think some people are kind of like, you know, I'm I'm trying to find a position, um, or or I just got placed into a position, but it sounds like you had just like a ton of people that were like, yo, like we want this Dylan guy. So do you feel like you did anything differently or maybe did you interview really well? Like just something that, you know, someone that's listening to this can be like, Hey, I want like a ton of offers like Dylan did. Um, you know, uh, obviously a huge, huge part of it is the amount of work that you put in the amount of mocks, right. The, 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 just 
yeah, the amount of time you put into it. But any anything that you can maybe point back to be like, you know, this was something that helped out. This was something that helped out just for other people. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like you said, first off the bat, I feel like Jet was really exciting for me because he saw like the amount of, of time I was putting in. Uh, but on the other end, like, like I said, I don't like to do anything less than 100%. So like, as soon as these pipeline offers came through, like I had an email out to them with like a one minute, well, I got an email out to them within like two minutes. And then I had a one minute video for every single one of them out within like an hour. Um, and I would make sure to dress up real nice, had the button up. Like, I know people can't see like your bottoms, but I like to get in full dress just because it makes me feel that much more yeah. confident. You know what I mean? Like it's just the full business attire. Uh, and uh, like I made sure the lighting on my desk, I have dual li- ring lights that were like 20 bucks each on Amazon. They're cheap, but it, it made the lighting setup. I, I reset my background so it's clean. It's kind of compromised to what I like. Uh, just because, you know, all the little tips that like Jet and all the people had given me, none of it was like stuff that I had to just like, you know, create out of existence. Like it was all put in front of me. I just had to follow what they told me. Uh, so all those one minute videos, I think that was a huge thing because I immediately got emails back from every single person like, hey, like. I super appreciate that because I made it just for them. Like I added their name in there, what I liked about their company, something that I found on their website. I made my time to do my homework in their website. Um, and immediately they were all like, like, we super appreciate that. That's above and beyond. And I could tell right off the bat at the start of the interview is like a good tone between me and them because they knew I'd already done research. I was already, my head was in it. Um, I joined all the interviews like 10 minutes early. They all mentioned that too. I was there ready to go. And then uh, I had written down all the questions I had through the interview, I took notes. So that way when the end came, I could ask some really in-depth questions. Um, and really, I think the biggest thing I noticed my interviewing style versus other people uh, was I just, I stayed right on objective. Whatever the company owner asked, like, hey, like, give me a very short answer. What's your weakness? Give them a short answer. That's a truthful weakness. You know, like I wasn't over explaining. I wasn't trying to like, I think a lot of people are really, really nervous and they just start going on and on. And they're everyone's like, all right, you know, we're not really even in the question anymore. Uh, but I just felt like I just brought a lot of confidence with myself and I kind of went each meeting like, even if I don't get picked, I know that I'm the best candidate and it's my job to show them that. Uh, and if I leave the interview and I don't get picked, I know that I did everything I could. I just wasn't right. So that was kind of the things I think that helped me the most, just being prepared and just being overly abundant in reaching out to them and making sure that everything was, you know, all the I's were dotted. Hey, what's going on, Aaron? Just popping in to the episode really quickly. So at this point, you've already listened half of this episode. So I'm assuming that you're at least somewhat interested in remote closing and how you can learn a little bit more about it. So I put together a free training. You can go ahead and click the link down in the description or in the show notes if you're listening on the podcast. Click that link. Don't go watch it yet because we still have another half of the episode here of the success story of RCA. Just open it up and just so you don't forget that you can go check out that video. It's going to go over not only what remote closing is, but also the four-step process of what I would do if I was starting from scratch, starting over to still see a success online using remote closing. So that being said, let's jump back into the episode. Click the link down to the below. We'll see you on the other side. And something that I'm noticing and that's just like a, a theme with you is, and this is, I, I mean, it's it's pretty obvious, but you're just really good at like following directions, <laughs> as simple as that might sound. <laughs> you got to do. And, yeah. uh, you know, that might, you know, I'm, I'm assuming that some of that does come from like how you're brought up in the military and stuff yeah. like that. It's like you, you're you forced into that kind of like into that mindset. But it's like, it's it's obvious that like, hey, if we mention to do this, this and this, it's like, well, yeah, obviously do this, this and this. I think there is a, a an amount of, especially if someone has tried like a million different things online and they've tried Amazon FBA drop shipping, there's almost like that built in skepticism with people mm-hmm. where, you know, they're like, oh, well, like this, this one online guru told me to do this thing one time and it didn't work. So I think there might just be some of that just built in kind of like hesitancy mm-hmm. of, you know, should I like do this thing or should I like try it this way because I think that it's it's good. But you know, you set up, you did the right. setup, you have the lighting. Um, I mean, basically on the on the setup thing, I mean, the first thing that I said when we jumped on the call was like, hey, that's a gimbal in the background because it's like it builds like that small round rapport because I have one uh, over here, too. So it's like they grabbed my attention and I was like, hey, like I can you know relate to this guy. And we talked for like a minute or I talked for like a minute about cameras. Um, so so cool. So that I think that was that was really, really helpful for um for everyone. Just follow instructions and do the work. And I promise you'll <laughs> you'll see the results on the other end. Um, okay. So you, you go through and, uh, so you pick one of the offers. We don't have to talk about the, the offer name or anything like that, but, um, you know, I'm just curious, I guess, what is like the, the offer that you're on? Is it like the one that you wanted? Just maybe something about that. And, um, you know, everyone's always wondering about, you know, KPIs and OTE and stuff like that. So let's just kind of wrap all that to, together if you can. Yeah. So really the offer that I went with and the reason that I chose it over my other ones that had available, um, was like, 
it had everything to offer me as far as like flexibility. Like I make my own days. I make my own hours. I mark off in the calendar when I want to work. When I don't want to work, there's no requesting time off. Um, you can just take a full schedule if you want to. And you cannot if you want to do. As long as you're making KPI, like it's 100% up to you. And that was the lifestyle exactly that I was like, because I love to travel. Uh, so that was like huge to me. And then, so I got brought on as a closer actually, which was another big scene because now I got to jump to a closer KPI, which, you know, when you're making KPI, it's really great. Um, so they, they told me and they weren't upfront about their KPI and I kind of caught that as a red flag, but then I, I talked on the phone with them and I was like, Hey, like, you know, if I see some of your numbers and they're like, Oh yeah, man, absolutely. Sorry. Uh, you know, most people don't ask that right off the bat, which is some of the training that Cole, you know, gives you and like, Hey, these are the questions you need to ask to make sure that it's not all shiny on the outside and you get in there and you realize, Oh, this is like put together with duct tape, and like super glue. Uh, so I got in there and he's like, yeah, so really like our low tier um, closers at KPI, which is about 25 to 30% are doing about 12,000 a month. And our top are doing about 37,000. And I mean, for me that like, once everything else was in line, like that was an easy close deal. Right. Like I heard the numbers. I was like, Oh, like, okay. Uh, but yeah, so it, it gave me everything like that. It was in an environment. So it's within the fitness realm. So I already feel like I have a good amount of knowledge behind that. Um, plus my own fitness story. Plus I can really understand like the people coming in, uh, and then they provide me all my leads. They mark my calendar up for me. Uh, it's really, I just sit down and I take the calls as many as I want per day. And so that that really checked everything for me because uh, I think it's really important to understand like outbound, inbound, like organic and non-organic like that. If you never had your toes in the water before, like it, that's super extremely important to understand what the scenes come from. But because I've been doing that for myself for a year, uh, I was kind of looking for a position maybe where I didn't have to do that stuff from the beginning. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, and they were they were like, yeah, man, you start when you want. Like, you tell us what you want to do. We're here for you. There's like a team environment if you want it. But like, you are your own your own dude, your own unit. So that was huge for me. That's really why I'm like, is that like I said, the nine to five. I was like, everything about this I hate, and now everything with this job is the opposite of the nine to five, which is perfect. So yeah, actually, on that note, maybe um, maybe maybe just like talk about the because today was your last day. How how'd you feel overall on on just like kind of that whole thing? It was. So this whole week I was nervous. I'm like, dang, like this is this is a lot, you know, like uh, cause like I called my parents and everything to my brothers and they're like, Oh, oh, when'd you get to this program? And you just like, okay, today's your last day. <laughs> like they couldn't yeah. they couldn't get it in their mind. And my older brother, the one in sales, he understood. He's like, Yep, yeah, that sounds about right. But uh so uh it was nerve wracking, but to tell you the truth, like yesterday was the perfect second to last day I could ever ask for because I got uh my hand slapped, I got written up, right? Because I forgot to check a box on like the nine out of 20 pieces of paperwork for one of the electronics that I also caught before I submitted it. So I fixed it on my own. Yeah. Uh, and then they're like, okay, we have to do an investigation and like write you up for this, even though you've done 400 units perfectly and you're our best guy in this department. Uh, we got to, we got to note this down. And so like it changed everything for me. And I kind of just sat there and I was like, you know what? Like, I'm glad this is happening because I feel so good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what the heck? This is ending. Like, um, <laughs> yeah. And then just like, Walking out of there, and I, I think the important part is I didn't burn any bridges when I left. Like I was very like on term. They were like, yeah, absolutely. Like, um, they were really, they understood. They're like, we totally really get it. And then, uh, driving home was a good feeling. Like just knowing that that's the last time those roads. You know what I mean? And like, you know what? Like, a lot of people don't disagree with this, but that makes it, or a lot of people disagree with this decision. That makes it even better because I know those people also didn't follow anything they wanted to do for their dreams, and now it's too late. You know what I mean? So that was a good feeling. Yeah, no, it was, it was felt really like achievable. Like I, I've done it, kicked it and I've met all my timelines. So good, man. Yeah. That's, that's huge is, um, you know, I've, I've talked to a lot of people that have been on that same, that same wavelength of, uh, you know, don't burn any bridges. Cause it's like a lot of times these are like, it's, you know, don't bite the hand that feeds type thing, even though it's not really feeding you anymore. But, um, you know, you, you never know what, you know, what is going to happen in the world where you might have to right. interact with that person again or whatever. So, um, dude, that's, that's super exciting. It's, it, it just brings me back to like, something very similar happened to me. Uh, I've told it, you know, on this uh, podcast before, but, um, I, I started like my own business and then like they found like my job found out that I did and they're like, uh, so you can either like keep doing your own business or you can work with us, but you can't do both. So they basically gave me the ultimatum. So I was like, yeah. uh, I'm going to put in my two weeks <laughs> cause I had invested in like a bunch of programs and stuff too. So it was, you know, a whole other thing, but, um, but yeah, so that's, that's super cool. And, uh, Actually, one thing that you did touch on too that I think could be helpful. Um, I know these things, but what were what are maybe some of the um, you know some of the things that you looked for 
in the offer to make sure that uh, it was it was the right fit for you. So you know the inbound lead flow and like that type of stuff. Just a couple of things so people people know. Yeah. So the first question that I asked any of them uh, was like for whatever position, if it was a setter position or if it was a closer position, I wanted to know how many they had in that position. If I was going to be the first setter or I was going to be their first closer, because I think that definitely changes the dynamic of what you could expect. Um, for some call company that has 50 closers and they are a rock solid concrete platform that has an incredibly good onboarding process um, versus a company that's like, yeah, I've never worked with anyone besides myself. I have no onboarding process. Uh, I just hope you can walk it. You know. So that was a big one. I was like, yeah, like, so how many do you have? And once I got an idea of that, it was, you know, how many calls are they taking a day? How many um, qualified leads are they getting a day if they're a closer? Just because I wanted to know that if I was able to max out my potential, they weren't going to basically have a lack of leads to me. Yeah. Um, cause I know I'm not going to be God status right off the bat. Like I'm not gonna be cold Gordon right off the bat, but I do know like down the road, I, I fully expect myself to be one of them just because I, I love working hard at whatever I do. And I want to make sure that they can kind of meet that criteria. So I don't have to jump boat in two months because they're no longer at the level that I can perform. Um, that was a big one for me. And then another really important one that I look for is, although I want to manage myself, I really wanted a team environment because I didn't want to feel like, a I've noticed some of the companies that I self-source, not any of them from pipeline, but self-sourcing, like the closers were this abstract third party that was not in the the company at all. They were contractors. They do this. Uh, you guys are not part of what we do over here. You're just like this, this other person. And I didn't want that because like, I feel like, you know, you're not growing the business in it. You're just kind of like this guy on the outside. And I don't feel like I wanted that community kind of in there. Yeah. Um, uh, so I, I asked about like their team meetings, kind of what was that? And then uh big theme for me was KPI and growth. Uh, so I wanted to know what their closers or their setters were making per month. And then if it was a setting position, like, Hey, if I come in and I kill these numbers and I'm really, you know, on goal, like, are you as a company really looking to grow fast? And when you do grow, are you going to be able to promote me to a closer or keep me with you to see that growth? Because, you know, as I'm growing in my skills and stuff, like if I want to hang, can hang with you guys, I'd love to do that. I'd love to find one company and just like barge it forward, uh, and, and be able to take it where you want to go. But aggressive growth was important to me. Just because I don't want to get, like I said, locked with leads, you know, kind of just like plateau and then have to buy, try to find a jump ship to keep increasing myself. Yeah. And those are, you no, know, those are a couple of, I mean, the main ones. And and just to drive the point home for a lot of people that are listening to this is, and I've made this point before, but there's, you know, I think a lot of people, especially when they're first jumping into like self-sourcing or interviews or whatever, is they get a little bit nervous about asking these, type, these types of questions, right? They're almost like they'll take the first thing that comes to them or, you know, maybe from more of like a scarcity mindset. But, you know, as you can see on here, like Dylan was able to get a ton of people coming to him and then pick the one that he wanted to move with because he was operating from the abundance mindset. And also, um, I lost my train of thought, operate from the abundance mindset but yeah, but still be able to ask those questions. So don't feel, don't ever feel like you're asking weird questions or anything. Cause ultimately like your growth is going to be 100% built off the back of like the foundation of their company. If they don't really have a foundation, then you can't really grow on top of that. And, you know, obviously you, you ask the right questions to, uh, to get to that point. Yeah. And I felt like that also like kind of builded before with them, because if I use those terms like KPI and all this like organic growth, um, advertisement growth leads inbound, outbound, I felt like Someone that maybe is just starting that shows you've done at least enough research where you know what you're expecting in the role and you're mm -hmm. not just like you didn't wander across it on a whim and have no idea what to expect. So I think that was those they heard the questions and they took them with like a, a positive attitude. So mm -hmm. yeah. And that's and that's that's a huge part too. It's like, you know, for for anyone that's listening, and it's like they these companies want you to ask questions. They don't just want you to sit there and like take all their questions and feel them through and, and that be it. They want it to be a conversation. That's also going to, you know, if you're in a communication role, whether you're a setter or a closer, it's like you got to be able to have a communication or, you know, a conversation. If you can't, then they might even look at that as, as something that they don't want to bring you on for. Um, so one one question that I always ask uh, ask everyone on here is, especially from, you know, from your background and and knowing sales for, for a good amount of your life, um, what would you say to someone that is maybe in that opposite field of they have like a negative viewpoint on sales or, you know, something like that. Like, what would you say to them to be like, Hey, like, no, this is like a viable thing. Like you can actually see success. It doesn't have to be sleazy. <laughs> yeah. Just like, I think the main thing is, and this is, I think that it, this would be the same conversation that basically I had with my parents and my parents are older and they come from that generation uh, of the car sales where really the, the sales world was like four basic things. You read in real estate, you were selling a car, you were selling TV or like 
those type of things, they kind of think about it. But like the sales in the new world, especially post COVID, where everything's remote, um, and people have really dove into that world, there's like just this unlimited avenue of all the different sales you can do. And it's really now from a standpoint, because there are a lot of programs, a lot of B2Bs, you know, a lot of B2Cs, like it's, it's really about finding something that you're able to do to sell that you truly believe in. Like, and I think the best thing about sales now that I've worked in the military, I've worked in the corporate sector, I've worked in, you know, all kind of around there, there's no other, there's no other avenue where you will be uncapped in your amount of growth and both income and skills and everything like that as sales. Like, I mean, I think that's been around for hundreds of years and people have known that. Uh, but like, it's the amount of training you can do now with it, which is not trial by fire and be able to like find a program like RCA and really like polish yourself off before getting into it and be able to understand the aspects. And then just the amount of leads and offers and businesses where you can do different types of sales, remote closing being like one of very many, uh, I think it's just phenomenal because there, you can really tailor a job to yourself now instead of just viewing sales as like, a, I got to go sell cars and scam people because it's not that at all. Like the world just so expansive. Yeah. And uh, to add on to that too is, you know, throughout this whole thing, you, you know, you have talked about how you've enjoyed or you wanted to get into real estate and uh, fitness has been a big passion of yours. And, you know, it sounds like, you know, obviously when you started talking to the pipeline, you would start, you were talking to Jet and it's like, I'm interested in real estate and fitness. And those were obviously the offers that you, that you went off after. So I really, the point of saying that is just driving home that, you know, it doesn't matter what you're interested in. There's a good chance that there is something out there, uh, an yeah. offer of someone that is, you know, selling a coaching program or mentorship or helping you get better at X, Y, and Z. Um, the, the example I always give is, uh, I've been a lot into golf recently and I'm getting hit with, I'm getting smacked on face with, with, with golf, uh, you know, trainers and coaching programs and hit your driver an extra 50. Like there's just so there's no lack of programs out there. So find something you're interested in and you're going to find the, you know, a program to be able to, to sell for. Absolutely. Um, so, okay, cool. So one other question that I, that I love to ask anyone. So for you, and you know, we didn't really mention this, but we mentioned it when we were recording. Um, so Dylan actually hasn't started his offer just yet because we have uh, actually an event, an in-person event we're doing this uh, this week, which we're, we're going to meet up at. We'll probably get a selfie or two. Um, but what are, I guess, your goals for the next like three to six months? Like, I don't know if you've, have you thought about it? Have you written it out? Like what's just, if you could be, if you could uh, paint the picture of where you want to be in the next six months, what would that look like? Yeah, no, absolutely. Like I'm a, I'm a very like logistical person. So I know exactly like all my goals are written down. And Love stuff. it. Um, so like the first thing is, uh, the goal for my first month is hit that 10 K mark, which I don't think I'll have any problem doing. But for me, that'd be the first time in my life I ever pulled in 10 K in one month. And I know because like the leads are there, the KPIs are there, that it is possible. Um, and I can accident, absolutely do it. Uh, so for the first six months at the six month mark, I want to be at minimum 15 to 20 K. Uh, and by the time I close out this year, I would love to be at 25, which I, like I said, I know I've got the work ethic, so I know it's possible. Uh, and I think like the other important thing is that I've taken from all the guys who are making like 25 K KPI that I've been able to talk to you through RCA and stuff is like, they said like, never stop your skills and never stop slightly source gigging, if you want to call it like, or like looking, if it, the better one comes on and you knew that no, no, that new platform could just take you exactly where you want to be, like never be against expanding it. Uh, so I don't know if I'll, I'll, you know, stay at this particular company at the end of that, you know, the year to have those, but, uh, I want to do that. And my, my main thing is I want to achieve a KPI of 35% by the end of the year and really know that I, you know, I'm reaching that top 10% because I, in the next five years or whatever, I want to, I want to reach the top 10% of the KPI you know I and mean? really know that I'm like one of the, the true hardcore closers that I can really just like walk into a company and be like, here's my numbers. They're phenomenal. Like, you know what I mean? It'd have like the whole world open to me. Uh, so yeah, so that's a really big thing. And then I don't, I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about extension or not. Uh, um, yeah, you, you can, it's, it's not, okay. it's not closed off. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, so my goal is, and I've already talked to this with my coach is, uh, so obviously I'm going to their in-person event, uh, this weekend. Cause as soon as I saw that, I want to jump on the opportunity to see all these guys in person. And then I want to be fully in the extension program in one. So Sweet. that's kind of where my mind's at. Yeah, we actually we haven't touched a ton on Ascension. We I think we talked about it like two or three times, but 
for those of you listening, Ascension is the third <laughs> program that we have. So we have our entry level, we have uh, RCA, which is kind of like the, you know, helping you get placed, that type of stuff. And then Ascension is like, hey, we want to help you, you know, reach the next level, right? Hitting these 20, 25, 30, 50,000 dollar months. Um, but dude, that's, that's, uh, it's number one, it's good to hear that you have some goals right now. Cause you know, I've, I've even myself in, in the past, like Cole's asked me sometimes, it's like, dude, like, where do you want to be in three years? I'm like, uh, uh good question. <laughs> um, so it's, it's always good to write that out. And just so you have something to, to shoot for and know, Hey, like, you know, it's, it's not necessarily like I have to hit that, right. Something more that you're just like shooting for and you're putting together the, the daily, weekly, monthly actions you need to, to, to hit that point. So that's, that's exciting. And, um, yeah, there's one one other thing that you said that I wanted to touch on, but maybe might come back up. Um, so yeah, so all that's super good. Um, what would you say to somebody that is maybe so that you, you already got them past the thing of like, okay, sales, yeah, I'm okay, I'm a little bit interested. Um, what would you say, what would you say to somebody that's on the fence of jumping into RCA? Because we get a ton of people that, you know, a lot of these podcasts serve as kind of okay. like that, that next thing of like, okay, other people are seeing success. So someone's listening to this and th- they're like, I'm on the edge. I don't know if I should do it. Should I trust these guys? What would you say to them? Um, yeah. So realistic, I've had this conversation with a couple of people now. Uh, like I always tell people, like, listen, if I if I could roadmap my last year and do it all again, but reorganize how I did it, I would do RCA before I ever started my own business. Because as far as like the fundamentals of sales and the actual theory of things, like I think it's easy for us to just think natural salesmen are born and the guys who are just naturally good at are gonna be the best salesmen. Uh and if I've learned anything, that's absolutely not true. It's the guys who really know how to uh, kind of manage the conversation and whatnot. And like, I learned more in RCA in two weeks than I did in a year of doing a trial by fire by myself. Uh, and I already felt like right off the bat, like some of these people I was mock calling with who had, had zero experience in sales, like they had worked at, you know, Domino's the last five years and they had been in RCA like one month and they're in their mock calls. I'm like, listen, dude, like, you are somehow better than me after a year of running my own business because you weren't just like throwing yourself in the dark room and kicking and screaming and hoping you picked up some knowledge. Like you were like, Hey, this is what, this is what we do. And this is why. And like, it's so much better and easier to understand it. Uh, and then I think just, you know, the ability, like I said, I got placed in, in six weeks. And I think that shows like, if you're willing to do the work, like there's 0% chance that if you put in exactly what they ask you to, and you just follow directions, which is the easiest thing in the world. You don't got to reinvent the wheel. You're going to end up uh, making a lot more than you think is possible and way quicker. You know what I mean? So yeah. And yeah, like looking back at it now, it's just the easiest choice in the world. So, well, I think that that could definitely uh, help a ton of people. So thank you for, for saying that. And, you know, I, I just wanted to, you know, obviously say too, like, yes, like obviously we're here to help and stuff like that, but I mean, we've talked about it multiple times, but dude, you, you crush it in terms of just put in the work and, you know, following instructions and, and you're, you're living proof of that. So I'm excited to, to see where, uh, where things go, you know, especially once you get into the offer, um, you know, we gotta, we gotta jump on and maybe like, you know, three to six months and see if you, you hit that goal. Cause I think you'll be, you know, up there and, you know, whether it's, you know, at where you said, or, or even past it, right. With, uh, with all the potential that is with, um, with the offer that it sounds. So, um, I always like to end these episodes with, um, just like a quick outro, but also uh, a golden tip or nugget or trick that you can give to people. So um, I'm going to do the outro. Think for like the next 30 seconds of just like one quick tip you would give to someone to end this off. And uh, yeah, think about that and I'll, I'll do this intro real quick. So um, for those of you that are, are still listening up to this point, I mean, we've been recording for like 40 minutes, 40, uh, 50 minutes at this point. So uh, you're probably interested in remote closing or appointment setting or how to get started. So um, what I did actually recently, I uh, I recorded a video that's about 45 minutes long and it goes through the entire process of what remote closing is. Um, I mean, I'm pretty sure Dylan went through it. So uh, he can tell you that it's just the four-step process of, of how to get started with remote closing, give you some information about it. And then obviously I'm at the end out of full transparency. If you wanted to move forward with us and have us help you get to that next point, then uh, we can we can talk about what that looks like. But really you can watch the training and get everything that you need to learn more about remote closing. So um, check that out. It'll be, if you're watching on YouTube, it'll be down in the description, first link down there. And uh, if you're listening on the podcast, it'll be in the show notes. So click that, check it out. Uh, Dylan, did I give you enough time? What you got? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so this is going to sound cheesy. Uh, so you're going to have to forgive that. But like this is something like I wrote down like six months ago, probably seven months ago. Uh, and I've kind of went with it since then, which is, I think way too many people think that their nine to five job they don't want should be their their job in life. And I think it's the job of every person is to chase their dreams. So like that sounds super cheesy, but like a lot of people 
struggled because they're like, well, how am I going to learn this new skill? And I got a nine to five. But if that new skill is taking you where you want to be, like, I think the best thing to do is view that as your full-time job. And the nine to five is that side gig that's going to support you for now. So you can get there and fully, fully jump in. Uh, and I think too many people put stuff on the back burners because that nine to five, which they don't appreciate, which is not what they want to do is just their, is their daily target. And that's what's their goal in their life. But that at no means should ever be unless it's the exact thing you want to do. You know what I mean? So that helped me a lot because like that helped me put the five hours in after work at night. Cause I'm like, this is my job because this is chasing what I want to do. That other thing that I just did for 10 hours, like that would just support me for now until I can do this because now I'm polishing my skills and getting myself ready to do what I really want to do, which is, should be, you know, my own law to myself. Is what I do. Um, so that'd be my biggest piece. Like that, that viewpoint. Woo, dude. Not not so uh, cheesy at all. I think that's uh, that's a perfect way. That's why I like to end these with these tips because I I'm just like I just get super happy at the end of these. Like that was that was a really great one. And um, I agree, dude. There's there's so many people that uh, you know it, whether it's a mindset thing or the way that they're brought up or whatever. It's you know so many people think that all that is possible is I need to work this nine to five. I need to work this job um, for the next forty years. But there's I was talking to my brother about this earlier too. He's looking to you know make extra income. He's a nurse and um, you know, just talking with him, I'm like, dude, like, I'm not going to tell you to do one thing or the other, but there's just so much opportunity out there. Um, so much money to be made and you don't have to be stuck in, um, uh, in a nine to five in a job that you don't like. So anyway, all that being said, Dylan, thank you so much for hanging out with us uh, for the last hour. I think people will get a ton of really good stuff from this. Um, uh, for those that are hanging out, leave us a comment down below what you thought, leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you guys on the next episode. Talk soon. Peace.